Florida Tim Brady duo tonight, all right? Oh, it's good to be here. This is a great crowd. Thanks for coming out.
told you the best looking part of our group is not with us tonight but she's up on the screen so when you get tired of looking at Lake and you get tired of looking at me just look up at that pretty face and that'll be all right we miss her we wish she was here but when we found out on Friday we have been up in the cold and people have had the flu and so we decided all of us were going to go get checked out because we sure didn't want to bring it down here to you and so we all went and got checked out and, and we, I was fine Lake's fine the driver's fine everybody's fine except for Melissa and I said, well, she said, I hate to do that, but I can't take that down to those precious folks. And so I said, well, you stay home, get well, and we'll come back. And get you. And she'll be with us next week. And uh, we actually are going to go back home tonight, and then we'll come back to Florida. We have, we've got it set up. See, we told our agent, all of when it's cold everywhere else, book us in Florida. <laughs> so we're coming back next week to do a whole string of concerts. And so if you look us up on the web, and if you, uh, you want to come see Melissa, you can. You'll love her. Great smile, great face, great heart, and great voice. And so uh, we're missing her tonight, but we decided, we, we called and said, listen, we can reschedule or we can come without her. They said, come on. 
And so we're here, and thank you for allowing us to come, and thanks for supporting us already, and uh, we're going to have just a great night. And so those of you, how many are seeing us for the first time? Let me ask, let me see that. Okay, a few of you are seeing us for the first time, the ones who have seen us before, then you know Melissa. And so the ones that haven't, uh, please come again and hear her sometime. But let me introduce the rest of the group to you. Uh, first of all, I'll start back here with one of the newest members of our group running the sound for us from, from Madison, North Carolina, uh, Mr. Tucker Steele. Would you make him welcome? 22 years old, and he's doing a great job. I love this guy. How many have ever heard of a group called the Hoppers? Anybody ever heard of the Hoppers? Okay, oh, okay, people have heard from here. Okay, well, he traveled. He lives close to where the Hoppers are from, and he traveled with them for a little while. And uh, he decided to move up in the world. <laughs> That's a joke. Don't tell Claude I said that. As much money as Claude Hopper has, we pay more than Claude does. Can you believe that? That's why he still got it. Okay, so we love the Hoppers. I'm just kidding, but we're grateful to have Tucker with us. And uh, then, new since the last time we were here, uh, I don't think Lake was here. He's been with about a year and a half now. And so uh, he's new to us, and we're so excited to have this young man with us. When we were looking for a singer, we didn't realize we'd be looking so soon, but we were. I happened to be talking to a gentleman who lives in Indiana, and his name, maybe some of you heard of him, his name is Bill Gaither. Anybody ever heard of him? <laughs> well, heard about, well, he's almost as famous as the Hoppers down here. Okay. Well, Bill said, hey, what are you going to do for a singer? I said, I don't know, but we need one. And uh, he said, well, I've got one you need to hear. He said, before you hire somebody, you've got to hear this young man sing. He said, great heart, great voice. He said, you've got to listen to him. I said, we'll do this. Send him to Nashville. We'll meet in a studio. We'll get around the piano. Melissa plays piano. We'll get around the piano, and we'll sing together and see how it works, see how the blend and everything works. He said, okay, I'll do that. So he sent the young man to Nashville. We all met, got around the piano. We got in there and began to sing some old hymns and some songs and newer songs. It was just going great. We love the blend. We love the sound. Love the young man's heart and his voice. Guess who else showed up for the audition? Bill Gaither. <laughs> Some of you weren't missing the other night. I said, guess who else showed up for the audition? And a lady said, Elvis Presley. <laughs> what, what an Elvis. But almost like Elvis, right? Bill Gaither showed up, and when he got there, I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. You know this is true. When he got there, he took over. You've seen him on TV. Well, there was just three of us and Bill in the studio. That's all it was. He came in and he was directing us, just like you see him do on TV. You know? He told us how long to hold the ending, what to sing, what key, do another song. And what was going to be about an hour audition turned into two or three hours around the piano, just singing great songs, having a wonderful time. Bill was like a kid at Christmas. He said, this is great. This blends good. He said, take this young man on the road with you. People are going to fall in love with him. It's been a year and a half, and he's exactly right. From Anderson, Indiana, 24 years old, would you make welcome Mr. Lake Jones? <laughs> he's doing a great job. Now, I got to tell you, his name is Lake, L A Y K E. That's a, I know that's a unique name. But I love the name, love the heart, love the voice. He's just doing great. Well, the other night, a lady came up to him at the table, and she said, What'd you say his name was? I said, Lake. She said, no, 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 I'm renaming him. His name is not Lake. She said, I'm going to name him. And, it, and, and you can't, can't see it real good because of the beard. But if he smiles real big, you'll see why. She said, I'm going to name him Dimples. <laughs> so, just look at the screen, okay? See those? So she's renamed him Dimples. So I saw her. He's single. You know, he, he's saved, single, and we're searching for somebody. For him. And so this lady came up to the table the other night, and she was just, she had him cornered. And man, she just loved him. She said, his dimples are so adorable. I just love this young man. I want to take him home with me. And so I was just kind of listening out of the corner of my, just kind of just listening, you know, as we were standing at the table. She said to him, she said, you look just like my fourth husband. <laughs> He looked back at her and said, well, ma'am, how many have you had? She said, three. <laughs> we found him somebody. Woo! We found him one. <laughs> well, hey, you want to hear this young man sing? Yeah. Oh, you got to do better than that. You want to hear this going to love this. This is a great old song, one of my favorite classics. Listen to Lake sing this wonderful song. I love this. Break the track in the march. Just a little bit. Tears to dim the eye. 
I live, the more grateful I am for heaven. And if you've ever had to say goodbye to a loved one in this life, you know exactly what we're singing about. And, and aren't you thankful that this is not home? Aren't you thankful that our home is waiting for us and that it's a reality that we will see our precious Savior and we get to see our loved ones again? I don't know about you, but that makes me happy. That makes me smile. That makes me able to rejoice through the difficult times of life. And, uh, you know, the, the Word says, in this world you will have trouble. But the good news is this isn't home. And we have one walking with us every step of the way, and then he's prepared heaven for us. I don't think you can get any better than that. You know what? That's some good news, isn't it? I think it's great news. And so what a joy it is to know the Lord tonight. We travel an awful lot. We uh, were on the road about 46 or 48 weekends a year. And uh, we, we just love what we do. And so we're grateful for the safety that the Lord has given us through all those miles. We'd be crazy to leave our driveway and travel all the miles we travel if we didn't have one taking care of us and leading the way. And so he's been gracious to us. One of the questions people ask us most every night that we sing, they ask us, do you all work for a living or do you just sing? <laughs> we get that. And we usually just tell them, no, we feel that it's just, just sing. It's a lot more fun. <laughs> but there's work involved in it, and uh, we, we love what we do. This is our only job. And so we, we, uh, we sing 46, 48 weekends a year, and it takes most of the, the year. And so we're grateful. But we, we've gotten to travel all over the world. We have been, uh, we got to go to Jerusalem. We have been to South Africa. We have been to Mexico and Canada. We have been to uh, Europe and, and helped me, Norway and Sweden and uh, Scotland and just all over the world. We've just been blessed to get to uh, to see a lot of the beautiful country that God has created. And so we're blessed. We've also get, we also get to go on the gospel music cruises. Anybody ever been on those? A couple of you? Okay, well, y'all don't know what you're missing. They're wonderful. They're just awesome. Well, uh, last year we went on three gospel music cruises. We got to go with Dr. Charles Stanley to Alaska. Uh, we've gone with Bill Gaither uh, to all of them, just, just great cruises. And so we're really blessed, you know. And don't get mad at us. Somebody has to suffer for Jesus. <laughs> we feel led to do it on the cruise. So we love our cruises. And uh, it's just been wonderful. We went uh, last, just a few months ago, we were in Alaska with the Gaithers and uh, had a great time. And uh, if you've ever been on those cruises, you know how they how they do that. They usually put two or three couples to a table. Have you all seen how they do that? It's kind of nice because you get to meet new friends. And if it's not the people you travel with, you know, you're getting acquainted with new people. And this is really a lot of a great way to, to get acquainted. Well, one of the first nights of the cruises, the one of the cruises that we went on, we, you leaving already? Yeah. Where are you going? <laughs> That's my niece. I give her a hard time. <laughs> she can't leave. Her mom's got the keys. Okay, so anyway, we went on this cruise and Melissa said, hey, let's get dressed up and let's go down to dinner. And she likes the nice restaurant on the cruise. So she said, let's get dressed up and go. So I said, all right. So we got to our room cleaned up, dressed up, and went to our table. When we got to our table, we were looking on our card to see our table number. We found out when we got to our table, there was two couples there we had never met. And we were so excited to get to meet some new friends, and it was really cool. So we sat down and began to get acquainted. And when we sat down and started to get acquainted, we found out that neither couple had ever been on a cruise before. They had been waiting for years to, to get to go, and they were so excited. And so as we were telling them, the, we've been on many of the cruises, so we were telling them the highlights of the trip told them where we were going to stop, what they were going to see, and they were just super excited. Well, the gentleman across the table from me, he said, I am so excited. I've been looking forward to this cruise. He said, I have been dieting for a month just so I could eat whatever I wanted to eat. I said, it's a good thing because all we do on these cruises is eat and sing all week long. We just eat and sing. So I said, you're going to love this. This is awesome. You're going to absolutely love this. So he said, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, can't wait. So we ordered our food, and uh, for some reason, his came out before the rest of ours did. So I said, he ordered a salad or something. So it came out early, and he said, I said, let me just bless this so you can go ahead and eat, and then when ours comes, we'll all take off. He said, that's a good idea. So I blessed it, and when I got done, he took off. Whatever he got, he started eating. And I don't know what he got, but he bit into something, first bite of the cruise. And when he did, he bit into something hard, and he broke his plate. <laughs> He didn't know what he, was, what he was going to do. He was sitting over a little embarrassed trying to figure out what to do, and he was kind of just kind of nervous. And so the gentleman sitting on the other side of the table next to me, he said, hey, hey, hey. He just reached in his pocket, pulled up a plate, handed it to the guy, and said, try this. <laughs> that guy, he said, you, I'm not putting that. He said, I'm not going to put that in my mouth. You've got to be kidding me. 
And he said, well, what else are you going to do? Just try it. What can it hurt? Just see if it works. So he looked around, took that plate, and stuck it in his mouth. And as soon as he got in, he pulled it right back out. He said, it's too big. I can't use that. It doesn't work. He said, I just can't use it. So the guy said, well, hang on. I got another one. <laughs> So he pulled out the next one, handed it to the guy, we talked him into trying it and said, just try it, see if it works. Put it in his mouth, pulled it right back out, says, too small, can't, can't use it, doesn't fit, doesn't work, I don't like it. So the guy said, well, hang on, you're still in luck. He said, I happen to have one more. So he pulls, that's not a plate, that's not a plate, it's something else. But anyway, so he pulls the last one out, hands it to the guy, says, try this. So he looked around, tried the last one, stuck it in. When he got it in his mouth, it clipped right in perfectly, just like his plate. He said can't believe this. Who would have thought that I'd be on my first cruise, I would break my plate, and I happen to be sitting with a dentist. That guy said, he looked at me, he said, I'm not a dentist, I'm an undertaker. <laughs> that's not all true, but that's funny right there, ain't it? That's good. Well, you, you'll use that next time, all right? Goodness. So there's no moral to that story except for come and go on a cruise with us, okay? Uh, we are, we, in fact, we are. Next June, we, uh, this coming June, we are going to Hawaii. And uh, we've got groups like the Collinsworth family, you'll ever heard of them. The Booth Brothers will be going, uh, Triumphant Quartet. I mean, it's just going to be an unbelievable lineup. So if you want information about that, make sure you get something out there tonight. We'd love to have you go. Well, now you know that, the, as I said, the prettiest part of our group is not here. And so we're missing her tonight. But we're just going to we're gonna just keep going and sing without her. So here's what I'm going to do. What's your microphone? Is it over there? Is your mic back here? Okay, here we go. Her mic is here. Now I want you to do this. We, we found her. I've got, uh, went into my computer and found a track with her singing it. Now she'll be singing it on, you know, tapes. It's the technology. We've got her voice. So we're going to sing this song with her. We're going to put this. Oh, she's a little shorter. Hold on. <laughs> well, if she has high heels, it's a little hot. Okay. So right there. Okay, this is gonna be this is gonna be good. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. We're gonna put this mic here. This is where she would stand and sing this song if she was here. So I want you to hear her voice. You can look at her picture, and we're gonna to try to do a song with it. That'd be alright? Okay? Alright? Okay. You ready? Alright, here it goes. You'll recognize this song, and we're gonna let Melissa sing part of it. So Go ahead, fire that track and, and uh, nothing? <laughs> How do you like it so far? <laughs> That's the quietest she's ever been. <laughs> don't, don't tell her I said that, okay? You get it to go. Okay, let me keep, keep looking there and, I, and I've got to tell you all this. This happened while he's trying to find that track. The other day I was driving the bus and we have a bus driver, thankfully, but he, was, uh, he needed to take a break, so it was my turn to drive. And normally when I drive, it's through the, in the middle of the night. And uh, Lake and Melissa, they go back and go to bed and pray for me, you know, and, they're, and so I drive through the night. Well, the other night, I don't know why, they usually leave me up there all by myself, and I'll drive through the night, watch the sunrise the next morning. And they come up the next morning, and they say, wow, that wasn't a bad trip at all. And they've slept the whole night, and, I, and I've been driving. Well, the other night, for some reason, before Melissa went to bed, she made two cups of coffee, and she brought them up there at the front. And uh, she walked, you know, walked up there and sat in that passenger seat next to me. And man, I was just, the miles were flying by. We were fellowshipping. It was so good. We were just having a great time. And uh, you, can, you can see her there on the screen. She's just so sweet. And uh, during that conversation, she leaned over to me. She said, I just got to ask you something. She said, you're going to love me when I'm old and gray. I looked at her. I said, well, honey, I don't know why I said this, but I said, well, honey, I've loved you through every other color you've ever had. So, <laughs> absolutely. Sure did say it. But you're right here saying, okay, let's sit with her. If you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the fire in my life. Oh! 
He said he would lay his head on his pillow. And he said in the silence of the night, all he could hear was his, wife, his wife's sweet voice saying, Lord, please save my husband. And he could hear the voice of his little girl, Lord, please save my daddy. He said he could not get away from those prayers. And so he woke up early that morning and he went home. Woke up his wife. He said she was expecting him to try to start a fight like he had done so many times before. He looked at her that night. He said, there's not going to be a fight tonight. He said, I don't understand all of it, but I know there's a difference in you that I see. And he said, I want whatever you have. And he knelt down by that very same bed where she had prayed for him for three and a half years. And he gave his heart to Jesus and God changed his life. And you don't see the, the marks of sin in his life because God makes all things new. And i got to tell you, he was really known in that little town that he lived in. And they always called him the meanest man in that town. Well, I went with him the other day somewhere. You know what they call him now? They know him well. He walks around that town. They call him Preacher Jack. Because that's what the grace of God can do in a life. Here's a song that talks about God's grace. And that's what God has done for all of us. When I look out and see your face.